Crypto markets have dropped below $1 trillion for the first time since early 2021, and Bitcoin's price is now below $23,000, which is its lowest point since December of 2020. There are a ton of factors that play a part in this market-wide crash, which is why in this video, I'm going to go over all the things you need to know about the crypto markets, what you should watch out for, and what to do right now. So first, what's causing the crypto markets to do so poorly? Well, I'm sure most of you guys know by now, but if you don't, inflation hit 8.6% in May, resulting in the fact fastest price increases in groceries, energy, and shelters since 1981. What's even worse is there is no sign of inflation cooling down anytime soon because the war between Ukraine and Russia is still going on, and the feds are likely to boost interest rates by three quarters of a point this week in order to reduce demand. Everyone's portfolios are down right now, and it's indeed a scary time for all markets, not just for crypto itself. For example, the S&P 500 is down 22% year to date, the Dow Jones is down 17%, and the Nasdaq is down almost 30%. Bitcoin is doing even worse, down over 50%, and Ethereum is down 67% year to date. When big fluctuations like this happen, lots of new short-term investors tend to sell off all their holdings in reaction to the latest drop, which could be further contributing to the drop across all markets. Now, a lot of people were winning from 2020 to 2021, but now that people are losing, it's going to be a different game. Some people will learn from this experience and stay in the game, but most will unfortunately take this loss as a sign that they shouldn't invest anymore. In entrepreneurship, the losses are just as important as the wins, and I think that it's no different with investing. You need to learn from the failures just as you need to celebrate the wins. But what else is new, right? Well, tons of tech and crypto companies have also paused hiring and some have even laid off employees. Coinbase, for example, announced layoffs firing 18% of its staff, and Crypto.com CEO said that the exchange was laying off 5% of its corporate workforce. In addition to crypto platforms, real estate companies Redfin and Compass also announced job cuts. And even Tesla CEO Elon Musk sent out a letter to employees announcing plans to lay off 10% of the staff. The economy clearly isn't doing too hot, and some of the biggest companies like Intel, Nvidia, Netflix, Microsoft, Lyft, Snapchat, Meta, Apple, and more are all slowing down hiring in response to the economic downturn. Inventory at major retailers is sky high compared to sales. Homes are sitting on the market for longer with more and more price reductions. And yeah, overall, it's just a crazy time for the economy. But it doesn't stop there because there's a lot more going on that's affecting the crypto markets. Recently, we've seen a ton of cracks and flaws in crypto projects. If you haven't heard by now, a crypto lender called Celsius has just gotten a lot of attention recently for their shady team members and business decisions. To start, former CFO of Celsius, Yaron Shalem, not sure if I'm saying that right, was the focus of an Israeli police probe for money laundering embezzlement, and other shady stuff. This, of course, made the community skeptical, but to make matters worse, Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky replied to a tweet last week from Mike Dudas saying that they were a risky business, and the CEO asked him if he knew someone who had a problem withdrawing from their platform. Well, just recently, Celsius paused withdrawals, swaps, and transfers between all accounts, so yeah, things aren't looking too good for Celsius. If you look at their website, they say you can access your crypto whenever, but clearly that is not the case anymore. And yeah, there's a clause in their terms and conditions that is actually allowing them to do this. This is why I always recommend having extra caution when it comes to these platforms you're storing your crypto in. The safest place, hands down, is to store your crypto on a cold storage wallet like a ledger because this way you have direct access to your crypto at all times. It's definitely sad to hear about the people that may lose their money with Celsius, especially right after what happened to Terra Luna. And I think that this was really the last straw that brought the market down to where it is right now. The attack on UST already caused more than $55 billion in losses for investors, and it poisoned the people's trust in crypto, especially altcoins. For a huge crypto lender like Celsius with over $1 billion in assets to be associated with illegal business activities is terrible news, and we've seen a shockwave hit the market in the last 24 hours since it was announced. According to CoinGecko, Bitcoin is down more than 12.5%, Ethereum is down more than 17%, and if you zoom out, the crypto market has lost over $2 trillion since its November highs. Celsius Celsius's own coin, meanwhile, has dropped from a high of $7 last year all the way down to 21 cents. That's why everyone says to never invest more than you're willing to lose. When bear markets come, lots of crypto projects start to show how strong their fundamentals really are, and if you don't have a safety net, then you could be financially ruined. So that's why you should always have your emergency fund first before investing into things, especially riskier things like crypto. And yeah, 
definitely be safe, you guys. Now, while we're on the topic of things to be aware about, you should also be careful about where you connect your wallet. In general, you don't want to keep your crypto in your MetaMask, especially if you've connected it to a website before to buy NFTs, swap coins, or make a transaction. Remember that anything online can be hacked. I mean, just look at this guy who got his email hacked and lost all of his Ethereum overnight while he was sleeping. There's been a ton of hacks. For example, the biggest NFT marketplace, OpenSea, was recently attacked back in February where one 1.7 million dollars was stolen in a phishing attack. So now that we have all that stuff out of the way, we can sort of move on to the most important part of the video, which is what you should do. First, you guys need to take a good look at your finances to see if you should even be investing or not. If you don't have an emergency fund, you should probably focus on building that up first, especially with inflation rising and the cost of pretty much everything going up. Another thing to consider is your income because the last thing you want is to be relying on your stock or investment portfolio if you end up losing your job. Ideally, all that money should you know stay in the market because that way you don't need to sell at a loss. So if you guys haven't already, I really encourage you guys to start a side hustle, which you can learn more about through my other YouTube videos. Having enough income will not only allow you to put more in the markets when things are at a discount, but it's also going to give you peace of mind so that you don't have to sell everything during a time when you know the markets are all down. Personally, I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging into my crypto portfolio because I see this as a huge buying opportunity for everyone that's trying to invest for the long term. I see Bitcoin's price rising above $100,000 at some point in the future. And so to me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I'm going to continue to scoop these lows while I can. And once the economy recovers, I'll probably be in a really great position to either take profits or just keep holding on. Of course, I'm just a guy on the internet, so please don't take that as advice. It's just what I'm doing and I've made my own personal decision to do so. I do think that cryptocurrency is going to be a big part of the future. So I will at least be buying more Bitcoin because you really can't go wrong with its fundamentals. And yeah, it's also never been hacked. So that's probably the one I recommend the most. It's the biggest cryptocurrency for a reason because it's safe and it's more long term. And yeah, my second choice behind that would definitely be Ethereum. In the short term, cryptocurrency is sure to be volatile just like stocks, which is why you should never be emotional about it or invest more than you can afford. But we should get a chance pretty soon to start putting in more since bear markets tend to bring down inflation, meaning we should start to see cost of living drop this year or the next. There's really no reason to be scared because crypto markets, they just move really fast, especially when you compare them to the overall stock market. Either way, you should be looking at everything with a long-term perspective because, well, it's the best approach when it comes to investing in general. Some of the most well-known investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have been advocating long-term investing since the 1950s and their approach has clearly worked out for them. So yeah, if you're invested, I encourage you guys to not panic sell and just hold or keep dollar cost averaging into things like Bitcoin. If you're thinking of investing, now might be a great opportunity for you to actually acquire some crypto. Markets should recover eventually, and if you invest now, there could be a huge potential for big, big gains. Data shows that those who buy stocks the day the S&P 500 enters a bear market have made an average of 22.7% in just one year. Now, while it's impossible to predict what will happen to the markets tomorrow or a week from now, I think that the potential returns are enough to consider buying when markets are as red as they are right now. And yeah, the same applies to the crypto markets because as long as you believe that either market will eventually go back up, buying could give you a bigger profit within the next year. Again, this is just what I personally think and you really just have to weigh the risks and rewards yourself. If you think crypto is a scam, you're probably right when it comes to the majority of cryptocurrencies out there. However, I highly recommend you check out my other videos on Bitcoin and other solid altcoins so that you can have a better understanding of blockchain technology and the future of crypto. There's a reason why many CEOs, billionaires, and even well-known investors like Elon Musk, Mike Novogratz, and Jack Dorsey are getting into the crypto industry. If you don't invest now while the industry is fairly new, you could be missing out on a ton of profit. But of course, there's always the chance that crypto tumbles to a zero dollar market cap, but I think that's highly unlikely. If you don't want to invest in crypto, I highly suggest you at least look into other alternatives like ETFs, individual stocks, I bonds, real estate, or even better yourself. With inflation at over 8%, your hard earned money is losing its value every year if you just leave it in a savings account. And there are so many things you can invest in to beat that inflation. Overall, I think this is a great opportunity for the people who are playing the long term game because as trust in the market is at an all-time low, you can decide for yourself if you want to 
go with the crowd or go against it. This makes me think back to the quote that Warren Buffett once said about how it's wise for investors to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Again, this is not financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment purposes only and do what you want with this information. If you want to learn more about investing and the markets, I really encourage you to check out my other videos on how you can make your money work for you. Be safe out there and please share this with a friend or family member who you know invests in crypto. Hopefully it's going to alleviate some of their concerns and encourage them to look at it more with a long-term perspective. If you guys want some free crypto and stocks, I'm going to leave some links down below. And of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. I make a ton of content about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.